Scientists in Singapore have created one of the most detailed maps of the developing human brain. The team at Duke NUS Medical School says these maps show how neuron connections can grow, a finding that could pave the way in the treatment of Parkinson's disease and other brain disorders. To explain, we have two of the authors of the study here. Dr. Hilary Toh is an MD, PhD candidate, and Dr. John Ouyang is a principal research scientist. Welcome both to the studio. Well, I'm going to start with you, uh, Dr. Toh. Why is this detailed map such a breakthrough for the science? So, firstly, thank you so much for the interest in our work. Uh, my team at Duke NUS is led by Prof. Alfred Sun, and we specialize in growing these brain organoids, which are like mini brains in a dish. And we work closely with Dr. John here to do the computational analysis of these organoids. Um, so back to your question of what makes our brain maps so significant. Um, basically, it's in their spatial and temporal coverage of the human brain itself. So firstly, what we mean by spatial coverage is that we're looking at many different regions of the brain. So in neuroscience, a lot of research is about the cortex, which is in the forebrain. But for us, we work on Parkinson's disease, which affects the midbrain. And there's not a lot of resources for this, right? So um, we wanted a map that covers all these different regions so that we know how to improve our organoids more and make it closer to the human brain. And the second point was about the temporal coverage of our new brain atlas. So it's actually a developing human atlas, um, basically saying that it's a fetal brain atlas, so not an adult brain. So in the adult brain, everything is like fully formed. But we want to know what's happening early in development because what we do in the lab is trying to basically copy what nature does. So we need to know what genes, what pathways are turned on early, what comes later, so that we can tweak our lab methods more and make it closer to what happens in nature. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely want to find out more about the applications of yeah. this map as well. But first, I want to bring uh, Dr. Ouyang into the conversation. How exactly is this brain atlas, uh, as Dr. Toh mentioned, how is it mapped exactly? How did you get to this point? Yeah, so, so what we have created here is a single cell map of the uh, developing human meat brain. So this means that you can actually measure the gene activity of individual cells one by one. And this technology is only possible um, recently. So in the past, what we do is that we actually measure an average signal across many cells. Uh, so to give you an analogy, this average signal is like a fruit smoothie. Everything is blended, so you don't really know what are the fruits that goes into, goes into the drink. But now if uh, this type of single cell maps, we are now able to inspect all the different pieces of fruits very closely, your single cells, that eventually make up a smoothie. So in understanding disease, um, single cell sequencing is important because you can pinpoint exactly what are the cell types that is um, driving the disease. Yeah, so how can all of this then be applied, uh, as Dr. Toh mentioned, to treat Parkinson's disease, potentially? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, so um, basically we have built this map with uh, this very high-resolution single cell map that contains a lot of uh, cells. And with this very high resolution, we are able to detect many rare cell populations, such as the dopamine neurons, which are being affected in Parkinson's disease. But more importantly, we are also able to detect other rare cell populations. And actually, some of these uh, other cell populations actually affect how the dopamine neurons uh, fun function. Yeah. yeah. So it's important to map out these cells because in the lab-grown setting, we want to avoid making these um, so-called off-target undesirable cells so that our cell therapies will be more uh, effective. Mm, well, Dr. Toh, are there other brain disorders that this map has potential to help treat? Well, definitely, because our brain atlas is not limited to one specific region like the midbrain or the cortex. It covers like all these different parts of the brain. So the reason why we created such a comprehensive atlas is so that different types of um, neurological studies can, be, can use this atlas as well. So for example, for Parkinson's, we are interested in dopamine neurons. For like Huntington's disease, they might be looking at the neurons that make another neurotransmitter called the GABA neurons uh, and in a different part of the brain as well. Mm. Or, I mean, there's so many examples, like even psychiatric diseases like schizophrenia will also look at dopamine, but in a different part of the brain. So there's a lot of potential for applications. Yeah, well, Dr. Ouyang, what has been the response from the global scientific community to this survey? What's been uh, the application or potential application that could be used? Yeah, so in terms of the um, response from, from the scientific community, so we have, um, before this work is being published, we actually already presented this work at uh, numerous conferences. And in general, we, we are being approached by a lot of other scientists as well. Because to create such a um, detailed single cell map requires a lot of, um, um, requires a lot of specialized computational expertise that a lot of, um, um, 
labs out there do not have. So they are very keen to use our um, single cell map to know how good their lab grown cells are. Um, that, they're, that they're making in the lab. Yes. Yeah, definitely a lot of exciting applications ahead as well. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. To and Dr. Ouyang for coming in and sharing about uh, this brain atlas with us today. From Duke NUS Medical School, we have Dr. John Ouyang and also Dr. Hilary To.